Welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm your host, Sarah Scully. This episode features the work of a brewer or distiller and is intended for viewers of legal drinking age. Please enjoy craft beverages responsibly. Thank you. Uh, my favorite thing that I've heard customers say is, oh, that's a drinking beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can have I've it. heard it a number of times, and it's, it's funny because um, I think all beer should be drinking beer. And, right. But uh, uh, really what we focus on is beers that you can drink every day. And, mm-hmm. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully and I'm here with Ben and Ann Linehan of Brockle Bank Craft Beer. Thanks guys for being with me. Hi everybody. <laughs> um, and uh, today um, we're just going to get to know these guys a little bit and then we're going to have a tasting in a few minutes. Um, so thanks guys for being with us. Sure. Um, so uh, Ben, you um, have been a member of the Homebrew Club, the Hops Club, um, mm-hmm. for a few years. And Since the start of it. Yeah, so. yeah. And um, so you started as a home brewer. Mm-hmm. And then a few years ago, how many years has uh, Brocklebank been going? Two and a half years. Yep. So you started to go pro. So what was the catalyst um, for that for that switch? Why not just brew more beer at home or something? <laughs> I got to the point where we were brewing so much beer at home, it was time to start sharing it with the public. Okay. Yep. Um, interested in more styles really than you could just keep up with the two of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, yeah. We, Obviously, stayed below the legal requirements. Right, of course. Treat it. Two hundred gallons a year. <laughs> yep, but even that is. I mean, you know, we all like beer, but that's a lot of beer. That's right. Of so, beer. Yes. yeah. So you guys opened, and um, I know that um, you know something that you both have uh, day jobs, mm-hmm. and something that you've said, Ben, is that you enjoy your day job as a plumber and want to keep doing that. So Absolutely. So talk about your sort of vision for the the size and the scale of the brewery. Uh, the brewery is at the size that we want it right now. So mm-hmm. uh, really, we're all about just uh, serving our local corner of Vermont and mm-hmm. uh, making beers to have everybody enjoy. That's great. And you're in a few local restaurants. I know I see We have about 14 um, different restaurants. Yeah, Three Penny up in Randolph, Worthy Burger, of course. Um, yep. And you guys do a farmer's market also? Is that right? We've for the last couple summers we've done the Chelsea Farmers Market. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Good. And um, we mentioned styles. Um, we're gonna have a little tasting in a minute. But um, one thing that uh, s- separates Brockle Bank from a lot of the craft breweries in Vermont is that you guys are not um, hop forward IPA focused. Um, you do a lot of other things. Um, so tell us about that then. What's your, your, your uh, well, preference there? Really, just like beers that are like really drinkable Mm -hmm. and uh, my favorite thing that I've heard customers say is oh that's a drinking beer Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I've heard it a number of times and it's it's funny because um, I think all beer should be drinking beer and but uh, uh, really what we focus on is beers that you can drink every day and Mm -hmm. enjoy them maybe have more than one and not feel overwhelmed either with the alcohol or the or the palate crushing uh, sensation of the hops yeah that's great um and you guys have done um, some collaboration projects as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the Timber Rattler, maybe Anne can talk a little bit about that collaboration. Sure, yeah. And fundraiser. So, Timber Rattler is it's an IPA and a half, as opposed to a single IPA or a double IPA. Um, and in a portion of the profits from sales of Timber Rattler go to support Timber Rattlesnake Conservation here in Vermont. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Timber rattlers are highly endangered in Vermont, this is the northern end of their range. Um, so, not that I really want to meet any timber rattlers in person, but right. certainly don't want them to go to extinct. So it's nice to be able to right. help them out, right. help that's the great. snakes. Yep, um, and that's u- that's usually in cans. Although you do have it on, on uh, draft today, I it's see. It's generally on draft too. But okay, uh, it's yep. all gone now, so it's just in cans. Right <laughs> oh, okay, now. all right. Well. Uh, Maybe see if we can crack into one of those later. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also did the Yes We Can project with Upper Pass. We talked to Chris and Andy a couple of weeks ago about that. But um, how was that from your point of view? How did how did you get involved with it? Oh, I think it was really uh, Andy's idea. I think it was Andy's idea. Yeah, they they approached us about mm-hmm. it, and um, it's a, certainly a cause that we care about too. Stopping this. And we'd been talking about doing a collaboration for a long time, so uh-huh. having a uh, 
a good reason to do one. Mm -hmm. uh, Community ser service uh, sort of right. impetus yeah. for that, yeah. Definitely. That was a big yeah. reason to do it. And right. of course, together we can fit for the name. So <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was on the signs already, and yep. Andy saw that as the, the name for the can, for the beer. For the beer. it was going in a can together. Right. So, exactly. Uh, and what was the style on that one? How would you describe that? It was like a Pilsner with American hops. Okay. Yep. What yeah. do we call it? A summer ale. Yes, yeah, summer ale. Yeah, was the name because it came out in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, kind of a hybrid. And then the proceeds went to the, remind me of the name. The Alliance, Alliance for Vermont Communities, which right. is the local organization that's working to yeah. stop new vistas. Anti-development anti um Organization, yeah, that's really pro great. sustainable development. Pro, pro sustainable, <laughs> yes. well, not yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, mm. Outside development, yeah, exactly. Um, great, and uh, I saw on social media recently you did another collaboration beer. Just about yesterday, that, right? we uh, we brewed a beer with um, Scott Shirley from uh, Harpoon, the head brewer at Harpoon, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna serve that at the Vermont Winter Brewers Festival in Killington this year. Okay. Uh, we're going to barrel age that one, and uh, it's going to be a uh, fairly strong mm -hmm. uh, Irish red with heather tips, so more like Scottish, but uh, right. barrel aged as well, so it'll be, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a really nice malty beer. Yeah, very nice. March 24th. March 24th. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll include the, uh, the link to that in our show notes for this episode. That's great. Um, and so, Ben, you brew... Uh, Tell us about the volume. I always get confused between nano and micro. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so a nano brewery, in our definition, mm -hmm. uh, is below four barrels mm -hmm. production in the brew house. Okay. Uh, yeah. Our kettle is actually sixty gallons, so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's closer to uh, one and a half barrels. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'll I'll show some pictures of behind the scenes here at the brewery, um, but we're here uh, at Brockle Bank. You can see behind us the board. And so you guys have a tasting room, and as part of your um, kind of compromise between your full-time jobs, you're open what, two days a week, Friday afternoons and Saturdays? Right? Friday 3 to 7, and Saturday noon to 6. Mm -hmm. And you have um, live music here. I know we've had... Once in a while, yeah. Here. yeah. Yeah. It's usually in the summertime so that we can sit outside. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Anne, is um, this project you've been doing called Manifest. Um, which is, uh, you know, a nice local small scale um, beer festival. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So we we hosted the second annual Nano Festival in August down at the Tombridge Fairgrounds, and the third annual festival scheduled for August eighteenth, twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, it is focused on the smallest breweries in Vermont, the Nano Brewery. So as Ben mentioned, four barrels or less. Um, last summer we had 10 small breweries come and we had almost 800 people attend. Um, and my, I had a couple of, of goals with this festival. One was to keep it affordable for attendees. Um, and the other was to really make it profitable for the brewers. Um, a challenge for small breweries at some of the bigger festivals is that, um, you don't get paid very much for your beer. So it, it can be hard to put out a lot of beer for these festivals and not make a lot of money. So mm -hmm. at NanoFest, um, most of the proceeds went to the breweries. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. good way to support and sample um, a lot of the smaller beers. So we're mm -hmm. hoping to work that event um, and possibly a separate tasting here into our uh, upcoming craft beer tour. So mm -hmm. that'll be great for yeah, people to experience that. Craft beer, local food trucks, yeah. some bluegrass music. Yeah, really yeah, it's a nice Good event. Good time for everybody. Yeah, and there's stuff there for the kids to do too, so that mm -hmm. was yeah. nice to incorporate yeah. and family make sure friendly, it's family dog friendly oriented. Yeah, so. lots of dogs. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Great. Um, well, we're going to uh, take a little break, and we'll be back in a minute. I think Rick's going to get to do the fun part and taste some beer with you guys. If we don't that. Okay. okay. Cool. Let's all right, we'll be right back. All right. All right. So we're back, and uh, we're going to taste some beers. And unfortunately, Ben can't drink any beer today because he's uh, working, but he's going to share some of his brews with us. I know what they taste like anyway. <laughs> about them. <laughs> what they should taste like, yeah. Okay, so what are we tasting first? Um, let's do the Stackley first. Okay. So Stackley is a Pilsner, 100% uh, Pilsner malt, um, which is one of the lighter grains, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, traditional German and Czech style, and uh, basically a, 
a very easy drinking light beer. Yeah. Uh, this one's different because I used um, Cascade, Chinook, and uh, Simcoe hops in it. So mm -hmm. that's an American slant on that beer instead of the, the uh, more mild and herbal uh, mm -hmm. traditional hops that are in a Pilsner. So this has a very citrusy American hop pronounced right. flavor right? Uh, because the, the flavors are so much more pronounced. Yeah. But uh, not a super bitter beer either. No, no, it isn't. You got almost see. a little bit of a still the peppery type of under notes, but the nose is immediately American. Hops. Yeah, absolutely American hops, mm -hmm. undeniable. And it has a slightly uh, lemony. Yeah, yeah I think the uh, the lemon flavor, lemony pine comes mm -hmm. from the Chinook. Mm -hmm. uh, then the the Cascade is very mild, and mm -hmm. then the uh, Simcoe is uh, sort of tropical fruits. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the, the brew process. Do the hops go in more towards the end of the, the cycle? So, the yeah, this has uh, low bittering hops and then uh, a good charge of hops right at the, the finish. And then it's also dry hopped uh, with uh, one pound per barrel. Very nice. So not super high uh, dry hops either. Mm -hmm. I think that would put it over the top. Right. It wouldn't be a... It wouldn't, really be a it wouldn't even be an American Pilsner anymore. Right. It would probably be an IPA or something. This has kind of got the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. It's very similar to the two mm -hmm. together we can actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the, the bite, the, 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 the Pilsner bite to it. I really mm -hmm. enjoy the, uh, the fruitiness. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting because I, I think that almost by default, Timber Rattler ended up becoming a flagship, even though it isn't. This seems to me almost the, the one you frequently have on uh, most often. No, not no. really, no. Um, what do you do? You Shot have is one of the most, mm -hmm. the most common beers on tap, mm -hmm. uh, which is a German style vice beer. Um, but uh, that was the second beer that we brewed and mm -hmm. with some modifications. Now it's, it's kind of a standard beer because it's a tribute to our favorite dog, Stackley, who died in June. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he had mean? the beer before he even <laughs> passed on, but uh, now it's right. a, a real beer and we don't mm -hmm. even take the the writing off the board anymore. Yeah, right. well, that's what I mean. Right. By a flagship, I understand that you, you know, somebody like that's not the first beer necessarily, mm -hmm. but the one that is constantly. And that's uh, because of the the sweet, the <laughs> tender spot that it has in our hearts. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, let's say it has a tender The dog has a tender spot in the heart, but the, the beer should too. I think this is one, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's great. Good. And we're going to do a slow tasting. We may not finish all of our beer, but let's, uh, let's talk about this one. So. so what you've got in front of you now is a little brown bat. It's a 4.3% uh, traditional English style brown ale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like that you're doing the English style. It's not a lot of people. Are you can't get this, English beer around here anymore. It's, it's Oh, if I were, uh, you also did a, a tour of some of the camera beers place locations sure where you did. went to England. On our honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. a great way to spend mm -hmm. honeymoon. Nature was. It's nice. So I have a, a love of, of uh, English style beers, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and you do an ESB as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us a little bit more about this. So a, very low hopping, mm -hmm. um, really just looking for a caramelly flavor. Mm -hmm. Low alcohol volume and yeah. uh, smooth drinkability. Mm -hmm. I like that you're doing. Nice for fall. I mm -hmm. like that you're doing a brown a brown ale, and I've noticed that a couple of others have done and bringing them back because they're mm -hmm. kind of disparaged. Sort to of some kind of forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as a home brewer, it ends up being one of the first things that you right. kind of get as far yeah. as a kit. Oh, brew a brown ale, uh -huh. and then yeah. you never want to the brew one sold. again because they're really not that great yeah. as far as the uh, as far as the kits are concerned. In the kit, yeah, it can be an old kit. So if the ingredients are sitting around, and then you make this sort of like mediocre to not very good beer your first time, then you're kind of like, oh, am I okay at this, or mm -hmm. is it? Just the style of beer is not very good, and right. yeah, those are yeah, well, We had one in Good Measure recently, mm -hmm. which was very good. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're, the CL they've got the same good. idea. They mm -hmm. they're doing a lot of uh, English style pale ales and, mm -hmm. and brown ales and stuff like that. Sort of, I think, because they're sort of forgotten styles. Yeah, but they're great beers. So. They're great. 
And they're great every day. It's a drinking beer. Yeah, it's a drinking beer. <laughs> they did do the one trick pony recently, and that was kind of interesting. What they, was that? They did an IPA recently. Uh -huh. uh, they called it One Trick Pony. Uh -huh. And it's I saw when they, were, when yeah. they were advertising for uh, needing some help, they said, if you, will, if you, you will not be brewing hot forward IPAs. <laughs> and then they immediately after that released One Trick Pony. Uh -huh. It was good, but it's much more of an English style. Yeah. I think it's still very mm -hmm. dangerous. They're mm -hmm. true to that. Right. Yeah, they're another, they're another brewery. We'll be talking to them in a future episode about um, that, that doesn't do the, the mega hop beers. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice. You know, I've, I've seen some articles. Rick gets a subscription to Brewer Own Magazine, and we've seen some other articles lately about how a lot of that hop forward stuff has put people off beer because they think, oh, that's all that's on the market now, right, right. and there's nothing else for mm -hmm. me to drink, and right. that's not the case. We get a very, very, almost an even balance of people who like the hops and people who don't like the hops. Right. We yeah. always have more and some more stuff that's not hoppy, yeah. but we definitely And then you get me and Rick who like it all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good. And what hops are you using in this one? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> At first, while you look, I thought it was a proprietary question, but no, it doesn't no. forget. I think I use Goldings in it because okay. you just really want mild, mild hopping, mm -hmm. and there's hardly any in there. It's yeah. all about the malt. Milk. There's enough. Yeah, there's enough. Mm -hmm. It's not like drinking syrup or something. Right. Yeah, it's enough it's to bitter it, but not mm -hmm. not really a real presence. Yeah, no. but that's that's a beer. And when we go to England, I drink adult pints. And <laughs> uh, kind of that. Yeah, it's yep. good. It's good. Great. Um, All right. So then we're going to so, yeah, um, our IPA. I'm going to show them. A, oh, before we move on to that, yeah, go ahead and show that. But when I have one more question about the little brown bat, it's very similar to what the uh, timber rattler is that little brown bats are also threatened by a fungal disease. It's very similar to the same one that's afflicting that. Um, so, again, yeah, we just haven't gotten around to setting that one up. Yeah, about to say, maybe it's getting ready yeah, for that, but again... The idea is uh, definitely to make awareness about the little mm -hmm. brown bag. Appreciate it. Yeah. Anyway. Thanks. Okay, cracking a timber rattler can here. Canned up at Bent Hill. Mm -hmm. So you, like, uh, we talked to the guys at Upper Pass who were um, canning their beer at another brewery to get take access to their... Uh, technology and their larger setup. So you're mm -hmm. doing the same thing with the... Sort of. We, I brew all beer here <laughs> mm -hmm. and cart it up to, to Mike and then uh, mm -hmm. a Bet Hill and then uh, hook it up to his canning machine, yeah. carry it back here <laughs> and put it in our cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're just selling the cans right here at home. Mm -hmm. Do you have any yeah. plans to do any your own canning? I noticed that I asked because, because Good Measure also just added a canning. I don't think so. No. No, it's... Uh, that's money. Yeah. Yeah. And you're you're not doing you're not trying to expand your attention no. to keeping it smaller. No, so no. that makes so, sense. So cheers. Really we're all about having mm. people come here and see us. Now that has a sweet nose. I don't really mm -hmm. smelled it before carefully. Now, I was interested when you were talking, uh, Sarah led off at the first part of the interview talking about your involvement with the Homebrew Club. Yep. And when we started that, uh, sitting around the table at Crossroads, okay. there was no Worthy Burger, there was right. no Worthy Kitchen, there was no One Main, there was no Bent Hill, there was no Brockle Bank, there right. was no Upper Pass. Mm -hmm. And what a change just in our local community yep. that's yeah. happened over the last, the last four years. or five years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, yeah, Worthy Kitchen. Oh, it's been longer than that. We're the Burgers five years. No, I think sure. our uh, our clubs. I think yeah, two thousand seven. The clock, yeah, yeah it predates right. that. The club started in I think two thousand. Right. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. right, exactly. But the uh, the we're at Worthy Burgers five years this past August. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, mm -hmm. prior to that, there was not much as far as a local scene. We had to make our own. Right. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, the craft beer thing has started to take off by then. Yeah. It hadn't really. In this central part of Vermont, which is still very rural and very or dairy farmland and all mm -hmm. that, um, so yeah, thanks you guys for being here. So tell us a little bit more about this then. The Timber Rattlers IPA and a half. It's not quite strong enough to be a, a double IPA, so mm -hmm. double IPA. Intentionally so. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it too. Right. <laughs> uh, another thing is my my mash tun will fit all the way over. <laughs> but uh, necessity, etc. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but um, so it's seven and a half percent, eight percent is a, the cutoff for a double IPA. Uh, but it's got the strong hop flavor yep. and aroma of yep. a beer like that. But not crushingly but so. No. no. That's a nice color. It's got uh, a little hazy. 
just a smidge? Just a little bit. Just you know, this is five separate. We don't filter any of our beers. Uh, there are yeah five different ones. So there's Warrior, uh, Cascade, Chinook, Amarillo, and Simcoe. Mm. That's nice. And again, more hop forward, but still a drinking beer. Still a drinking beer. Mm -hmm. But you be careful with that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem. It is a bit sweet, a little bit maltier than some of these others. And um, yeah, it can go, 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 <laughs> goes down real smoothly. It's yeah. excellent beer. That's great. Well, thank you. Well, thanks, Ben, for being with us today. And cheers. Cheers. We'll salute you. <laughs> I'm not going to drink cheers. that. Not drinking. <laughs> not drinking. <laughs> Thank you guys for being with us. Again, we hope to feature uh, Brothel Bank and other nano breweries uh, on the next beer tour, so stay tuned for details. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.